And this video, I'm going to go through this uh, basic example of reinforcement learning in MATLAB, in which an MD the MDP environment is going to be used, a Markov decision process, and also a Q learning agent. The example was taken from the getting started section, it's the most basic example to show how reinforcement learning is used in MATLAB. I'm going to include all these things I'm showing in the description. And in general, the general schematic of reinforcement learning, as some of you might be familiar, there are other videos explaining uh, reinforcement learning as an introduction. Uh, but just to quickly go over it, uh, you're going to have an agent, which is your intelligent agent that's going to take the decisions that is gonna, are going to affect an environment, and that environment is going to be updated and return some observations. And based on those new observations, a new action is taken. And in addition, the environment is going to provide a reward that is basically your uh, the benefits and the and the penalties that each of the penalties and benefits have a different uh, value, a different scale. The benefits are positive, the negatives, uh, the the penalties are negative, and you add all those into a scalar, and that scalar is going to be used to update your policy, and in turn, that policy is going to determine the actions uh, that your system is going to take on based on the observations. In this case, we're going to use a QA, a Q learning agent, which is basically a table that is going to have a table between the actions and observations with the reward, and based on that table, uh, the decision is taken. But uh, this uh, article that I'm showing here, which I'm also going to include, has a list of all the agents that MATA has. It, there's an agent for discrete action spaces and also for continuous action spaces. Some are value-based or are policy-based and some are actor-critic based. And this article also suggests the, how to attack reinforcement learn, learning problems depending on the nature of the problem. For example, in this case, in which we have a discrete set of states and a discrete set of actions, then you can take this path. As you can see, we can use a Q learning agent can, that can only be used for discrete action and observations. And the author of this article suggests going from a basic agent first that is easy to train, but it's not accurate and eventually increase in complexity as you have developed your system. And for example, if you have a, another type of environment in which the actions are discrete, but the uh, observations are continuous, then this is the path. For example, you're trying to control uh, a car and the only actions that you can take is apply a 10 newton force to the front or negative 10 newton force to go back then your set of actions are discrete but the dynamics of the position and velocity are continuous but also let's say that instead of applying one one of two forces to go front and back you can apply any force between negative 10 newtons and positive 10 newtons then you have a continuous continuous action space and an observation space and then the set of agents for that are different and notice that the TRPO is the agent uh, common and most advanced looks to be the most advanced that covers all these cases. So now let's go back to the environment for this particular problem. So it's very simple. We have eight states. The states seven and eight are terminal. We want to go from state one, which is the initial state, to one of the two the terminal states. And the reward uh, is determined by the edges in this graph. And we want to take the path with the maximum reward. In this case, it means going through this path and notice that each st state has two possible actions, going up and going down. In this case, I go up, I get three, then go down, go one, and get nine. So I have a reward of 13 when I get to state eight. So that's the optimal path. And we're going to train this agent so that it determines it is. OK, so let's do the example. First, we create the Markov decision process. In this case, we have eight states and two possible actions, which are going up and going down. And now uh, that Markov decision process object is also going to have a couple of arrays. One of them is for transitions, and that is the probability of transitions. And the other one is the rewards. And we also have to determine the, the star state and the terminal states. OK, so for the transition possibility, in this case, it's very simple. The action you take determines the next state. If, for example, if I go up, then I always going to go up. But there are some environments for that this Markov decision process allowed to model 
in which I can say, okay, I have 80% of going up. If I want to go up, if I decide to go up, I have 80% of going up and 20% of going down. So that will be reflected in this transition. We're going to see it in a moment. If, for example, if the first dimension is going to be for the current state in this array, and the second dimension is the next state, and the third dimension is for the action. So, for example, in here, we're going from state one to state two with an action of one. So the probability is 100% of going, if we decide to go up, we have 100% of going to state number two. It, let's say that if we decide that, uh, that instead of 100%, you have 80%, then you're going to have 0 0.8 in here, and then you have a 1, a 3, 1 with 20% in the transition. But in this case, it's 100%. But also, then there's the reward array that with the same subscripts is going to capture the reward. In this case, when going from 1 to 2 with action number 1, going up, we get a reward of 3. If we go down to, we get a reward of one. If we go from two to four, we get a reward of two. And you can see it here, two to four, uh, going down, not going up, reward of two. Also notice that uh, these are determinant states. So seven and eight, seven states in seven, and eight states in, in eight, and they get no reward for that. Okay, so let's just create those transition matrices and take a look at them. Okay, so let's go and take a peek uh, at them, LDP. For example, this is the uh, matrix of going up and going down. So let's say, I mean, this is the current state and the next state. So if I'm in the state number one and I go up, which is the action, then I have 100% chance of going to the second state. If this will be 0 0.8 and, and going down will be 0 0.8, to, uh, if, if it was probabilistic. Okay, so the reward. So here you have a reward from going from one to two, you have three. If I go down from five to eight, I get nine. So you should see it here from five to eight, get nine, exactly. So that's your matrices. Okay, now let's go to the next step. Uh, we have to determine the terminal states, which are here. And also we have to, uh, now we can create the environment. We have the markup decision process ready. So we use the function reinforcement learning, markup decision process environment. We get the environment. And also uh, in reinforcement learning, when you train an agent, for example, let's say that you're trying to train a robot to walk. There are two possible uh, ending states. One of them is that the robot walks to the destination. And the other one is that the robot falls without being able to recover. So that would be an episode. So to train the robot, you have to go through a bunch of epi episodes. So whenever you start an episode, you have to have a reset, for reset function that takes you to initial state. In this case, the reset function is going to take us to the initial state, which is 1. So that reset function is going to be on the environment. So in here, we provide an anonymous function taking us to the first state for reset. And finally, we're going to just make sure that randomization gives us always the same values. So now we have a, the environment. Now we're going to create the agent. Uh, first, uh, we're going to, uh, as you can see in the, the in the diagram, you can see the observations and the actions as the API, the interface between the agent and the environment. So we're going to take the actions and observations from the environment in order to be able to communicate with the agent. And for that reason, the agent has these functions to get the observation. You see it's a method, not a function as is shown in here. And the same for the actions. We get the action from a method from the environment. And then we create the table, the table that goes from observation to action to give us the rewards. So we pass both the action information to create the queue table. And from the queue table, you can see the queue table is basically a table of rewards. 
And right now it's in zero because it hasn't been trained, but later we're going to see that we have values that reflect the rewards that we see in the chart above. Okay, so with the table, with the observation and the actions, we're going to create the Q function. And the Q function in this case is going to be our, the core of this simple agent. So now we, we need some options for the agent. The agent is a discount factor, which means that is used when you want to decay the, the reward over time. But in this case, we don't want it, so we set it to 1. If we want to decay the reward by 10% every episode or so, then you can put or every step that is because that that decays within the within the episode, so it will be zero point nine or something like that. Okay, so these are other training factors for the options, and also we need the optimization the learning rate for the Q function, and that goes into the property of critic op optimizer options. Notice it's the same object above. Okay. Finally, after we get the Q function and also the agent options, we can create our agent. So now we have our agent ready. We have the agent environment. Uh, like in deep learning, in deep learning, you needed uh, the network, you needed the data stores, and also you needed training options. And then you use a train function that returns you a train network. And here is similar. We have an agent, we have an environment, and the training options. So the training options will be 500 maximum episodes, a 50 steps max a, for per maximum 50 steps per episode, and it's gonna stop when the average reward is close to 13, I think, for 30 episodes or something like that. So that's the way that it's gonna stop. After, uh, yeah, that determines that training is done. Okay, so now let's uh, notice that the agent is going to be trained, but you don't see the train uh, the agent in the left hand side as we saw in deep learning, and that is because uh, this the train is not a function; it's a method of agent. That's why it trains the agent because it, it is a method. So as input to a method, we have the environment and the training options, and we're going to get some statistics. So let's see the training. Okay, so we see that the reward is not very good at the beginning, it's like about 8, but it is going to close down eventually to the expected reward, which is around 30. Let's take this out. This is the maximum reward, 30. So once it's stabilized, it finished training. But this is a very simple model, so it's going to finish quite fast. Okay, so it met the criteria of average reward, and it finished after 139 episodes. So this is pretty quick. Now let's simulate the agent. The agent has a scene method to simulate with the environment and now we can see if it was trained correctly. So notice uh, this is the agent, two agent, we have a scene method and the environment and we get the data from the simulation. So now let's pick at the, the results of the simulation. First let's see if it finished. It's done. So yeah this is the flag indicating that it was able to complete. So in the first step, it didn't reach the terminal state, so it's 0, 0, and then 1. It reached the terminal states after three actions. 1, 2, 3. It finished there. Okay, so let's take a look at more data. Let's take a look at the actions that it took to take that termination state, that arrive to the terminal state. So here, here are the actions. 1 is up, 2 is down. So it's up, down, down. Up, down, down. Cool. So let's take a look at the reward. So the rewards are 3, 1, and 9 uh, as is expected. So, and the cumulative reward will be 13, which is what we expected for the max, uh, optimal path. So now uh, let's uh, see the Q table. The Q table is what was trained for the agent to be able to take this optimal path. So let's take a look at that. Uh, first, uh, let's get the critic. From the agent. Whoops. Critic is Q agent get critic. This is a method. So we get the critic there. From the critic, which is a Q value function, we can get the Q table. So critic get learnable table parameters. 
So that's our table, and from the table, we just get the only table that we have in there. So you can see the, the train queue table that is quite close from the expected. This is the expected one. You can pause the video and see that it's pretty close. How do we interpret that? If, for example, if we are, this is state, state number one, action going up and going down. If we go up, we have a reward, an expected reward of that path, 30. If we go down, we have 12. So, of course, we're going to take going up, which is what the agent did. We went up. Once we are at state number two, if we go up, we can have, have a reward of five, getting into terminal state seven rather than eight. But if we go down, we have a, a reward of 10. And notice that it's quite close. This is a little bit far, eight from five. But this is close. These are close. But still, it doesn't matter that it's a little bit far. It knows that we have to go down on the second uh, state and so on. So that's how the, the agent in this very simple example where we have discrete the state space for the observation and discrete actions it can be, are, is able to find an optimal solution. Thank you very much for watching.